Welcome to the fifth part of the CSGO skin making tutorial using free and open source tools. In the last video we prepared the TGA and VTF files of the skin. In this video we will be looking at the workshop workbench of CSGO. View our skin there and talk about the workbench available settings. CSGO has a console that provides the ability to run many commands related to the game. One of those commands is to open the workbench. If I'm not mistaken, the default keyboard key that opens the console is the tilde key. If it doesn't work for you, then you can check out which one it is in the settings under the UI keys tab under keyboard slash mouse. It's the toggle console entry. So open the CSGO console and type workshop underscore workbench and hit enter. This is the workshop workbench. Here we can view the skin modify its settings and eventually publish it to the workshop to be voted on. Here we can change the weapon. Let's choose the Glock. In the center we can see the three viewing modes. The side view gives us a look at the left side of the weapon. Sometimes this view can give a good picture to be used as the skin thumbnail in the workshop. We also have the workbench view, which gives us more control of what we see. We can pause the movement and manually change the angle we're viewing. We can also roll the model so that we can see how the other side looks. And finally we have the hold view which shows us how the skin looks from the player's perspective. You can see how the skin looks when visually inspected. And how it looks during reload. On the top left side we can choose the skin style. Currently it's set to none. That's why we see the default look of the weapon. Click on the drop down list. We can see that there are 9 skin styles available for us. In this tutorial we'll only discuss the custom paint job and the gunsmith styles. For now let's choose the custom paint job. Let's load the skin. For that we need to click on the choose pattern button and choose the UV sheet VTF file we created in the last video. Now obviously this does not look like the skin we created, and that's because the settings are not set correctly. First thing we need to do is to check the ignore weapon size scale. Second thing is to set the X, Y and rotation offsets to zero. These values are relevant for skins that have different patterns for different drops, like the Moonrise or the Lab Rat skins. But in our case we don't want the skin to move along the weapon in any way, so we'll, we'll set the end of each value to zero. Let's also set the wear to zero. This value is only relevant in the workbench. It exists so that we can see how our skin looks in different wearing states. Now the skin is starting to look more like what we would expect. Let's add the normal map to see the difference it makes. Check the use normal checkbox and click on the choose normal button. Choose the normal VTF file. And now we can see how the skin turned from being flat to having height. And our bumps and carvings are visible now. And finally we need to change the Pong values. The Pong exponent controls how light is dispersed on the skin. Higher values will make it look sharper. The Pong intensity controls the intensity of the light. Never use values that are too high for the Fong intensity as it can make the skin look horrible. For our skin, let's set the exponent to 125 and the intensity to 10. Now the skin looks good. However, we can still do a bit better. Let's try the gunsmith style and see what happens. Now we have more settings that we can work with. The skin became slightly darker and that's because of the colors we have here. Some of the styles allow the coloring of a skin using these color values. We will use those colors to control how the skin looks in different wearing settings. Let's leave color 0 untouched. Color 1 controls the color in the less worn out states, like factory new and minimal wear states. Let's set it to white to make our skin brighter. Let's leave color 2 as it is and go straight to color 3 and change it to dark yellow. Set the wear to battle scarred. Now the gold color has a darker value. You can do some creative stuff using those colors and control the wearing of the skin better. 
Let's set the wearing back to factory new. One final setting that we'll change is the Fong Albedo Boost. This value is disabled for the custom paint job style. The Albedo Boost value can make the skin shiny. We don't need to use high values in order to achieve that. If you use very high values it can mess up the look of the skin. Let's set it to 5 and see what happens. Now the golden parts look shiny and now we have reached the optimal settings for the skin. We still have one small thing to deal with. If you look closely at the handle of the Glock you'll see that there are some dots visible. Those are not part of the skin and do not exist in the diffuse or normal maps. Those are part of the ambient occlusion map of the weapon. We can see it more clearly when we check the default look of the weapon. We will deal with this issue in the next video. For now let's save everything we did. Click on the save button. Navigate to the folder of your skin and give a unique name to the text file you're saving. From now on every time we want to view our skin we can simply load it using the file we've just saved by clicking the load button. And with this we finish our fifth part of the CSGO skin making tutorial. In the next video I will talk about how to remove texts and other unwanted stuff from the weapons ambient occlusion map.